Hello and welcome to today's concert here from the Bridgewater Hall in Manchester. We're lucky to be back in this wonderful, wonderful concert hall at this amazing Markson concert organ. Tom, my brother, is here filming and recording again. And of course, my lunchtime organ series was supposed to have started back in March. But with lockdown, we filmed you a special concert back then. And that was four months ago, over four months in fact. And nobody's been in here, played this instrument or given any performances in the hall at all since then. It doesn't look like they're going to start very soon. So we thought we'd come back in over four months later and give you another organ concert. Now when I do my lunchtime concerts I often play from the stage downstairs where I have the electric console which is attached to this instrument because you can see better, hear everything in balance and the audience can see what you're doing. But this is the mechanical console. People always say why don't you play the real organ? They both sound exactly the same and operate in the same way but this one is completely mechanical upstairs. Every note is connected by a wooden tracker or a rod up to the pipes and the wind supply. It's a, it's a full-on physical experience and you do feel like you've done a day's work once you've done a concert on this but it's an amazing experience you do feel part of the instrument and so we thought we'd give you a concert up here today because you'll be able to see everything and a, a real organ console with real stops and it's a, a great sound up here as well that was of course Fiat Lux by Theodore Dubois to begin Fiat Lux let there be light seemed appropriate for today and it was dedicated to WT Best the organist of Liverpool the city organist in the late 19th century of course Fiat Lux is also the motto of Liverpool University and it just seemed an appropriate sentiment for today of peace building from nothing to full organ to reflecting the dawn of time and the beginning of light fiat lux we're going to move straight on though now to a, a piece from the 18th century vivaldi vivaldi wrote over 500 concertos in total for violin mandolin bassoon you name it almost every instrument but he's best known for four of his concertos the four violin concertos known as the four seasons one of the really earliest examples of program music descriptive music with a story now i'm going to play you summer because it's summer so that seems appropriate and uh, in this piece all the concertos, the Four Seasons, have sonnets and words throughout them. And people aren't sure whether these words are by Vivaldi or whether the words came first and the music second or vice versa. However, they describe what's going on in the music and vice versa. And in this one, in summer, we get the heat of the day where the man and the flock languish, the farmer in the fields of the hot sun. And you can almost hear that sort of shimmer you can see in the distance. Um, there's uh, cuckoos you'll hear, turtle doves, finches, and then you'll hear the hot and cold wind as they blow threatening storms the second movement is the farmer again this time he's being harassed by gnats and flies and you hear this very sort of short repeated figuration as they as they bite him uh, in the hot sun in the background though we hear the uh, the beginnings of a thunderstorm and the possibility of thunder and lightning which he fears of course the last movement his fears are realized the uh, thunder and rain all comes and destroys his crop in the field and during this piece, Tom is going to include on the screen the words for the sonnet throughout so you can see it. And this is a transcription I did a few years ago for organ solo, the complete four seasons, and it works really, really well. These sort of pieces were always transcribed. People like Bach would transcribe for organ solo of Vivaldi's work. So it's a great tradition to do pieces like this. It's a brilliant piece, and this is Vivaldi's Summer from the Four Seasons.
fantastic piece of music, very, very famous. I uh, hope you enjoy hearing it on this instrument. Um, and it works really well because, as I said, people like Bach would transcribe for organ solo, and so it's completely in that tradition to play pieces like this on the organ. And with that in mind, I'm going to go straight on to a piece by Johann Sebastian Bach. This organ is built in a, a sort of very Germanic North German style with separate parts of the organ. Each manual has its own separate part on the organ, and as you look at the front of it, you can almost see where the pedals, the grate, the positive, which is right at the front here, and the swell are all situated within the organ, so each one's got its own separate division. And this is the type of organ which Bach would have been used to playing. And I'm going to play one of his greatest, if not his greatest piece for organ, the Fantasia and Fugue in G minor, known as the Great Fantasia and Fugue. This is thought to have been written or created for an audition which Bach undertook in uh, exactly 300 years ago in Hamburg at the St. Jacobi Kirk. Uh, he was auditioning for the job there and he was given possibly an improvisation to do. And the theme we think he was given is an old Dutch song which goes like this. Um, begins like that, which he took as the fugue subject before you get a fantasia. And this is in the real North German tradition of fantasias where it's very improvisatory, very chromatic, uh, very demonstrative and lots of big, big gestures right from the opening. Um, there's chromatic passages which lead to the extremes of the keyboard. At some points you're on all the black notes of the keyboard, which in Bach's day would have been incredible with the tuning they had. Uh, then into the fugue, uh, which is one of Bach's greatest fugues, a brilliant writing for the keyboards and the feet, uh, builds up to a huge, huge finish and it's an amazing piece not only to play uh, but to listen to. Very relentless uh, and a real workout for the organist too. So I hope you enjoy this, I'm looking forward to playing it too. This is Bach's Fantasia and Fugue in G minor.
the thought that Bach might have actually improvised something like that is absolutely incredible. He was an amazing person as well as a composer. Many people say, oh, Bach is not my favourite composer sometimes, which I'm always amazed at. People always think of it as a dry, dusty name on a, a page, really. But as a human being, he had 20 children, he was auditioning for jobs almost constantly, and he wrote so much music, it's unbelievable. We don't even have a lot of what he wrote, it's been lost over time. And when you look at his job descriptions when he was going for these auditions, he would do things like... Uh, Look at his uh, wages, he would get paid in some money, uh, lengths of rope, paper, wood, and uh, usually quite a large amount of beer. And he was quite a character uh, and was always getting into up to all sorts of mischief along his life. So he's a, a real, real character and you can hear it in the music. Um, we're going to move on to another character now, Camille Sanson. And this piece is to finish with today. Um, a great, great showpiece originally for orchestra, the Bacchanal from the opera Samson and Delilah. Now, when Sanson wrote this, of course, biblical operas weren't the most popular thing in the world, and this was probably um, a strange piece to include, really, a bacchanal. It comes at the point where Samson has uh, confessed to Delilah that his uh, strength lies in the length of his hair. He's then been shorn of his hair, tied up to a pillar in the temple of the Philistines, uh, and he's awaiting his trial and ultimately death, we imagine. Um, at this point, the priests and priestesses of the Philistines are celebrating because they've captured Samson. As you would imagine, it's a party. Uh, somebody has one too many, all gets a bit too carried away, and they descend into this bacchanal. Absolute mayhem. It starts off so peacefully uh, and gentle, really. And Sanson was incredible because he used to visit North Africa and places like that a lot. And what we think of as really sort of North African and uh, Egyptian-style sounds in modern terms comes a lot from Sanson and his visits there. These scales that you hear at the beginning of what you think of as, say, North African music is what Sanson wrote, and people often copied it, the sort of snake charmer sound, if you like. Uh, you hear that at the beginning, and we set off in this bacchanal, a dance. There's a sort of very amorous moment in the middle of very warm sounds, and it builds up to complete and utter mayhem by the end, and ends in a huge sort of flurry. Uh, a brilliant, brilliant piece of music. Originally for orchestra, as I say, uh, this is a transcription I made. Very, very tricky, I don't mind saying, for the organ. Everything is going all the time. Thumbing down as well, a technique that's uh, used a lot in big virtuosic transcriptions. And this is a great piece of music. So I hope you enjoy this. This is the Bacchanal from Samson and Delilah.
can't finish the day at Bridgewater Hall without giving you an encore. It just wouldn't be right. Uh, and I've got a brilliant piece for you. But before that, thank you so much for watching today. Uh, thank you to everyone at Bridgewater Hall for allowing us in, especially today, to film this. The first concert since uh, lockdown began in the hall. And hopefully there'll be many more to come. We hope you've enjoyed listening and hearing this organ. And thanks to Tom for filming and recording. And to finish with today, a piece you will know. We had summer earlier on and you get lots of gnats and flies, as we saw, but you also get a lot of bumblebees. This is Rimsky-Korsakoff's The Flight of the Bumblebee. <laughs> Thank you. 